U.S. Senator Ben Cardin, the chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, has once again sounded the alarm about the atrocities taking place in Sudan as war rages on in the Eastern African nation. He was speaking Wednesday at a hearing on the conflict and humanitarian emergency in Sudan. Viewers Douglas Mpuga follow the hearing and has this report. In his opening remarks, Senator Cardin also called for external actors to stop arming the belligerents in Sudan and called for a diplomatic solution. The hearing comes after the chair sent a letter to President Biden requesting a determination on whether Sudan's rapid support forces and its leader, General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo, should be subject to sanctions for gross violations of human rights under the Global Magniske Human Rights Accountability Act. Ceasefire after ceasefire has been violated. The risk of further atrocities is high. Diplomatic efforts to end the conflict have failed. I think we need to make it clear to both parties and their foreign backers the cost of a continued conflict is higher than the cost of coming to the negotiating table. A report from last year by the United Nations Panel on Experts found evidence that the UAE was giving arms to RSF. The Senate expressed concern for the plight of civilians caught up in their fighting especially now are the fighting approaches Al-Fasham. It's the only remaining city in Sudan's Darfur region. The rapid support forces have not taken over. Eyewitnesses report attacks on over 16 nearby towns with entire villages burned to the ground. Starving civilians are trying to escape the violence with their belongings on foot. As the death toll climbs, the United Nations has warned that the lives of 800,000 civilians who are still living in the city are in danger. It has been more than a year since the current conflict erupted in Sudan between the RSF and the Sudanese armed forces. The senator noted with concern the role of external actors in the conflict and called on them to stop arming the belligerents. Noting that there has been a blunt and violation of the UN arms embargo, that has been in place for decades, Senator Cardin emphasized that the Sudanese people deserve security and prosperity as much as any other people in the world. U.S. Special Envoy for Sudan, Tom Pariello, who appeared before the committee to discuss the horrific crisis in Sudan, said the war and humanitarian crisis in Sudan are already catastrophic. Worse yet, he added, the most likely trajectory forward is towards a famine fighting that takes on increasingly ethnic and regional aspects and the possibility of a failed state of 50 million people on the strategic eastern getaway to the Sahel. Our strategy, plain and simple, is to end the war. It's to end the war by supercharging our diplomacy around the whole of government, raising the costs of those fighting and fueling the war, and building an alliance of regional partners with enough leverage to compel the two sides to accept a deal that we do not believe they will reach on their own that hands the Sudanese people back their future. Second, we're continuing to raise the costs of fighting and fueling the war. We're engaged directly with both fighting factions, including top generals, to deter escalation and atrocities. The goal, he said, is to build the political will sufficient enough to force the actors to silence the guns. For VOA, I'm Douglas Impuga. Kenya's military said on Wednesday that its forces killed six Al-Shabaab militants, including a foreign fighter during an operation in the coastal county of Lamu. The Kenya Defense Forces KDF said it launched a targeted operation at 1 p.m. local time, 1000 GMT, against an active Al-Shabaab camp in Nkumba, about 10 kilometers west of Pandango, near the vast bony forest where the insurgents hide. The operation successfully neutralized six members of Al-Shabaab, including a foreign national, and resulted in the confiscation of significant logistical supplies, the KDF said in a statement. According to the statement, the raid was staged following intelligence reports that the group was planning an attack in the area. The KDF said some of the terrorists managed to escape and advised the public to remain vigilant as the operation may lead to increased activities by the group, especially as the number of injured terrorists is reportedly high. 
Community members are encouraged to report any suspicious behavior or individuals seeking assistance in the area. This vigilancy is crucial as we continue to disrupt terrorist activities and enhance security in the region, the KDF said. Ramo County has been in the spotlight for the past few years due to the increasing number of devastating militant attacks that have left hordes of security personnel and civilians dead. Kenya's border areas such as Mandela, Wajil, and Galissa counties have also experienced similar attacks affecting overall development. Thank you so much for watching. Life